وعليكم السلام الله يرضى عنه جزاك الله خير بارك الله يسلمك الحمد لله الله لك الحمد How are you, brothers? Alhamdulillah. And myself? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? 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 Allah, how are you? Yeah. That's rubbish. How are you? Yeah. Is that the reply? That's the reply to Hayak Allah? Really? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I just say Hayakallah. When people say Repetitive. Hayakallah, I say Hayakallah. If someone says Hayakallah, yeah. Yeah. Cause, you know, this is good. Uh, you're in Saudi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a common it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. A greeting or. Oh, or even a way of thanking, yeah. Yes. Okay. Ah, the other was just saying, Allah. Allah. Saying the same thing. Allah, you hayy. Allah, 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 so well. Doctor, how are you feeling today? I'm fine. How about you? Just uh, with the exception of sore throat, I'm okay. Just the reception of what? With the exception of sore throat. Uh -huh. You see, I have so much sore throat that you cannot even hear me. Lucky <laughs> you. This is Allah's way of wiping up your sin. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, but lucky it's you. Inshallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yes. I think so. Bismillah. 
Everyone I think is sick. Yeah. Everyone's sick. I'm not sick. So are we just I'm just tired. But not sick. I think are we waiting? <laughs> that's both of them, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely. <laughs> I think everyone has sick except me maybe. Sick he said sick and tired. Sick. Everyone's sick except me maybe. Yeah, is uh, well, so how are you doing with the second day after? Brand shake. Marhaba. Now, mashallah, today is Marhaba wa Eid Mubarak. The day of the 11th day, mashallah. The day of the 11th day, mashallah. The day of the 11th day, mashallah. Mashallah. May Allah accept our hajj. Amen. Allah Amen. Allah 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 accept our good deeds. Amen. Amen. In these days, we are highly recommended to make dhikrullah. Allah. To mention Allah. This is, one, this is one unique thing, uh, Doctor, about our celebrations. Yeah. They involve a lot of remembrance of Allah, of worship, acts of worship. We've got other religions. The celebrations don't involve so much worship. You know, and, and worship rituals and such. So it's a it's a blessing. Even our celebrations are, are a blessing as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, well, the important point uh, in Islam, Eid al Adha and Fitr, celebrating them and being happy with them, giving presents to your kids, is a form of worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other religions don't have this. So you take your kids out to a restaurant for Eid. You actually, it's like you're praying. It's a form of worship. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Look at. The like greatness uh, and simplicity of Islam. Just remembering Allah, saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa illa alham, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. This is an act of worship. Ibadah, dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very easy and very simple. It doesn't require that much of effort. It can be done any, any yeah. time. Mm -hmm. uh, Rasulullah <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa told us, <laughs> Let your tongue be wet. Remembering <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the good news, brothers and brothers and sisters watching us, that if you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. Mm. What a great honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fadkuruni. <laughs> فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ So if you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. Allahu Akbar. Just imagine that Allah the Almighty. We're changing around. The variety today, a bit of variety. Brother, how, how do you feel today, inshallah? A uh, little bit. Really. Alhamdulillah. So most of us having this kind of you know, cough and flu, yeah. alhamdulillah, inshallah. Yeah. We get yeah. more ajr, yeah. inshallah. We get yeah. more. It's part of hajj. It's part yeah. of hajj. Inshallah, we get more, more reward, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. So, alhamdulillah. Just imagine, oh, try, let's try to live this great piece of ayah. It says, Fadhkuruni adhkurkum. Allah, jazakallah khair, akhi. May Allah reward you and bless you. Jazakallah khair. <coughs> Any comment, brother, Sheikh Abdullah? Fadhkuruni adhkurkum. This is, again, it comes back to what we are talking about, the whole theme, the whole theme about uh, Hajj itself. It comes back to our purpose of worship, you know, our purpose of creation. And doing dhikr in this sense too, if you go back to the times you know, when a lot of maybe the, the people were, were ignorant, remembrance of Allah wasn't a big, a big part of their way of life. Mm -hmm. But practicing Islam, following the guidance of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, it becomes part of your life to the point that it's very easy to do. It's like breathing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's even more enjoyable than speaking. Wow. You know, subhanAllah. So it becomes a habit. I think that there are some people, especially the young people, when they're caught up in a certain culture, they're, they're deprogrammed to worship Allah. <coughs> they're programmed more to entertain themselves and, and try to waste time. But getting into the habit of remembering Allah, and the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the easier it becomes. And it becomes part of yourself, you know, you become, you feel actually more complete. If you compare yourself to before you were remembering Allah much, uh, and after, you definitely feel more complete and more at ease and more tranquil with yourself. And so alhamdulillah. And this also signifies very, one thing very important, mm -hmm. that Allah is all-encompassing. 
no matter how trivial the matter is, he is aware of that. And Zikrullah is a very, very big, I think, act. So those who think that Allah's power is limited, this ayah must be a, must act as a light, as a guidance to all, that Allah is all encompassing. You zik here in your heart, not with your tongue. He knows it. So this clearly signifies that no matter, be very careful in your deeds when it comes to riches, righteous deeds, Allah knows it. Be very careful that deeds other way around. Sure. So Allah knows everything, whether you reveal it or conceal it, yeah. He knows it. So be very confident about His powers. This should be, a, I think, a way forward when it comes to developing a tawakkal. <laughs> 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 as you mentioned, I mean, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure. Initially, I mean, the, ni the niyyah that this is there in the heart. But also we are you know, recommended that we mention Allah, remember Allah, saying subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, as the Prophet wasalam, told us, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّحْمِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ So it's not only the dhikr of the heart, this is part of it. But in addition, it has a manifestation on, you, on our tongues, also in our behaviors, that we have to be you know, in a state of peace and tranquility. This is the other side of the benefit of dhikrullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. Ala bi dhikrillah, through remembering Allah, hearts will come to rest and peace of mind. So if you, will, if you like to get the peace of mind, tranquility, through remembering Allah. And subhanAllah, during the Hajj and the 10 days of the Hijjah, we are highly recommended to make dhikr. فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ Increase. Do it abundantly. Remembering, remembering Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Quran says, وَلِيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ Another ayah, فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ and to mention Allah, or the name of Allah, on appointed days, certain days, some of the ulama, Ibn Abbas and others, mentioned that the, the, what's meant is the 10 days, also Ayyam Tashriq, Ayyam Tashriq, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th, the Ayyam Tashriq, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi told us that these, these days, هذه أيام أكل وشرب وذكر. These are the days of eating, drinking, and remembering Allah. So let's really, I mean, make it, Sheikh Dr. Zalakhir pointed out to a great thing, that let's really live it spontaneously. Uh, let's, let, let's dhikr become, becomes a habit. Mm. Every time, when you walk, when you ride, when you drive, <coughs> when you at home, when you wake up, when, say, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And look at some brothers or sisters who just, SubhanAllah, every time they say, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Oh, subhanallah. Whenever they say a statement or a sentence, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, it becomes attached. It becomes part of their lives. And SubhanAllah, imagine brothers and sisters, but also those who watch, that SubhanAllah, even, inshallah, their long, 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 long life before death, your tongue will be wet, ratub, remembering Allah. Your tongue will be used to, to remember Allah. So in the crisis, in the difficulties, in, when you face any problems, just subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. It will be natural, like naturally yeah. exactly. uh, turning to Allah. It comes spontaneously. <laughs> so let's, let's, develop, let's develop this great habit, this great habit of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dr. Omar, please. Sorry, yes, sorry, brother. That's okay. I just wanted to mention that even uh, 
one of the advantage of actually making zikr is actually prevents you from doing bad deeds. Mm-hmm. If you have in your heart, in your tank, remembering Allah all the time, Reminds then you how can someone do some a bad deed, you know? <coughs> because you're always remembering Allah. You will be mindful. You will be mindful. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Wait, at at the same time, uh, with regards to the silent mm-hmm. zikr in the heart, uh, or expressing this, when we walk about in Mecca, or amongst Muslims during these days, and people are saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, out loud, Immediately those around them remember Allah yeah. and want to also do the same thing. Encouraging others. And uh, so when we make dhikr, sometimes it's a, it's a form of da'wah. Exactly. And it's a reminder to other Muslims. And they also respond to the dhikr. And they remember Allah. And we get the ajr, inshallah. Yes. Similar ajr. Like a chain also. reaction. It's just like yes. a chain reaction. So one one especially the other. during one hajj. The other. During Allah. hajj, when you're hearing people making <coughs> ala bayk Allahumma ala bayk. Yeah. Or saying <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Oh, la ilaha illallah. People are repeating exactly. it. Some some might and, it. And the dhikr is yeah. moving about between the people from one to another. Exactly. We're reminding each other. It's so really and beautiful. And it's a buzz in the environment. Beautiful. It's an, an amazing buzz. When you see the people, see the, the commotion, the moving, which is beautiful to see. Mm-hmm. From every part of the globe and people being busy, young, old, sick, rich, poor, everyone's there. And you said, and it sparks its dhikr Allah. Yes. The buzz in the environment is yes. beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, compare it to in, in Jahaliya, when you go to like a, you know, a football match or, or to a, 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 a stadium, a big event, the buzz is they're saying desires and music and distractions mm-hmm. you know this is this all is about worshiping Allah and the whole thing is just resonating with this it's, it's a beautiful feeling it, it becomes more alive if they're moving yeah but when they're in dhikr it's special lift elevation of, of life you know and, and happiness it's really nice we, we were outside yesterday um, and we caught a cab just a short distance and um, he only charges 10 riyals for a short distance, which is pretty good for these days of, of Hajj. Alhamdulillah. There's a price that goes up and up and up. Mm-hmm. And he made a beautiful comment. What was the comment that he made? He said, uh, I don't know how to say the Arabic for Just say it in English. Say, say it in English he, he said something that, that means they will never cease to be good in the Ummah. Something related to this? Mm-hmm. And yes. Yes. Yes, yes exactly. Uh, because Salam. Uh, our brother gave him some money and he said, no, he only wants 10 real. He took half of it and he gave half back. And he said, and then he said this, uh, as a reminder to us that good is in the ummah, we shouldn't be disheartened. And, it, yeah, we and then what followed, what followed, dhikrullah, jazakallah khairin, alhamdulillah, Allah yes. barik flik. And it's just going on and on and on. We left happy, he left happy. It was just, <coughs> mashallah, you know, Allah really, really nice. Allah Allah special time. Permit me, brothers, uh, may Allah reward you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa nusalli wa nusallim ala al-madhuthi rahmatan lil-alameen. Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira wa ba'd. We begin in the name of Allah, or I begin in the name of Allah. You brothers began before me. We invoke the peace and the blessings of Allah upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions, and all those who follow in their path until Allah inherits this earth and everything upon it. Then, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. A reminder for myself and everyone, inshallah, who is with us uh, on Huda TV, that these are the days of remembrance of Allah. And it is... Uh, it is amazing that the deen of Islam has encompassed all matters of life but has rotated around the concept of remembering Allah. In the uh, Quran, and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says in the prior scriptures that have been revealed to the people before us, is that the remembrance of Allah is so attached to the concept of the return <coughs> back to Allah. That Yawmul Ma'ad is amongst the three fundamentals that the Quran repeats continuously but is this the purpose just to remember that we're coming back to Allah? No, the purpose is to remember Allah Azza wa Jal, is to know the one you're returning back to, and the one who created you, that he will bring you back to him. And this is, uh, this is interestingly uh, enough uh, uh, related to the believer today, uh, as one of the earlier scholars said, that the scholar who when you see him, I'm sorry, not the scholar, the believer, the believer, al mu'min alladhi in ra'aytahu dhakkaraka billah. If you just look at him, if you just take a glance at him, look at him, he reminds you of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
When he speaks, he reminds you of Allah Azza wa Jal. When he acts, he reminds you of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is someone who Allah Azza wa Jal has given the success in this life. And this is really uh, manifested in the, in the message, messages of, of the prophets and the messengers. And uh, uh, its peak in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Sunnah, but also related to Hajj. Uh, Allah tells us about Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Uh, what does Qanitan mean? Uh, Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, he really earned many titles. He was given the title Khalilullah. He was given the title Hanif. He was given so many titles were related to Ibrahim Alayhi Salam uh, that one uh, wonders. How is it that this messenger of Allah has been given all this, all this preference? So Qanitan, what does Qanitan refer to? Qanitan gives the idea that he was continuously in a state of remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. كَانَ دَائِمًا عَابِدًا لِلَّهِ فِي كُلِّ حِينٍ In every moment of his life, he was within that scope of remembering Allah. The heart, the mind, the tongue, the body, the, the actions, everything was involved in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he uh, analyzed the concept of dhikr and tells us that dhikr is of three levels. Remembering Allah falls upon three levels, one of three levels. Either one is remembering Allah Azza wa Jal in, uh, by the utterance of the tongue, in other words, uttering the statements of La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, to the end of these statements, Allahu Akbar, or he is remembering Allah by heart. And meaning by heart that the, 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 uh, the essence of uh, recognizing Allah's uh, will, Allah's uh, ability, Allah's beautiful names, Allah's beautiful uh, perfect attributes and qualities. This is within the scope of the believer's uh, uh, mindfulness. The heart is, is always in that state. Or at least... Uh, returning back to this state when uh, uh, in that state of forgetfulness they come back and this is the state of the human being always uh, performing uh, jihad for the sake of Allah jihad meaning striving, struggling in the sake of Allah and this is in regards to dhikr the third level is to combine both when the tongue is uttering and the heart is in that state of remembering Allah Azza wa Jal this is a clear uh, 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 lifting of the barriers between one and Allah Azza wa Jal. And this really is the state uh, where Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, muqarrabun. These are the ones who are drawn near to Allah. These are the people who are drawn near to Allah by the will of Allah. Uh, when uh, a person or believer is given this success, it is only uh, through the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal that one is, is, is driven to this path of guidance. So yes, indeed, wallahi, the, the days uh, and the seasons that Allah Azza wa Jal provides for us to come closer to Him and to uh, bring us into a state of remembrance and to uh, imitate and follow the path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, further on the path of his father, our father, Millat Abikum Ibrahim, who was Samakum al-Muslimin. It is the path of your father before uh, Ibrahim. He is the one who named you Muslims, or uh, in another uh, understanding of the ayah, uh, Allah is the one who uh, named you Muslims or submitters to the way of Allah. So yes indeed, the, the concept of dhikr, wallah, if any of us uh, uh, from any gathering benefit, that this is really the greatest uh, virtue, the greatest benefit, the greatest reward in this life, that Allah would put a person in, in clear and, and and, and, and straight attachment to Allah Azza wa Jal in remembering Allah, this is the path that uh, enviousness is, is, uh, is allowed in. When, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, only two people are to be envied. One is uh, the one who Allah uh, gave the wealth uh, and uh, has guided that person to disperse that wealth in the way of Allah, in what pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, the other uh, is one who Allah has given the Qur'an, or in another narration, al-hikmah. Al-hikmah is a concept related to knowledge, and has uh, uh, guided them also to uh, either recite the Qur'an, which is the highest form of dhikr, day and night, or to disperse that knowledge amongst mankind. And this is part of the favors and the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So may Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who remember Allah on a continuous basis and further guide us to this. generation to do the same and better. Yes. I mean, the trend with a lot of people is that they do it and maybe their kids don't do as much and the trend goes down. We should always try to make our, our next generation better than us. So you know, we lift that level up bit by bit, inshallah, too. So, inshallah. And it is also, uh, we can infer many things from this particular uh, act of ours. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. So this is something which we can do in our daily life. أحسن عملا, the best of the deeds. We are remembering Amala, uh, Allah all the time. أحسن عملا. I think it does take care of that particular aspect as well. أحسن عملا is the general yeah. concept of of deeds. Yeah. And أحسن عملا, this is a unique actually approach to the subject. أحسن yeah. uh, عملا, uh, where the best of deeds, yeah. and the bestness of deeds here isn't related to the amount, yeah. the quantity yeah. wise of, of uh, deeds, but rather the quality of yeah. the deed. In other words, if the deed is within attachment to the concept of the three uh, 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 let's say the, the heart, the mind, the tongue, all are, are, are combined in the, in the dhikr of Allah, then the deed is more perfect than one is just uttering the remembrance of Allah by tongue, but is absent-hearted or absent-minded. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if one is really conscious of Allah in that sense, uh, it's more perfected and, and greater in the sight of Allah. And this is why two who are remembering Allah, the same remembers, the same dhikr, but one has a higher rank than the other. And, and this is only known to Allah. No one can boast so, about this. No one can state so, so that true. they have this, this, this level or this rank. This is only known by Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is why it's a continuous, ongoing uh, process for Refining the process to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's only uh, uh, clearer in, in the concept of salah, I believe, because it's a repetitive act of worship. And this is where Allah Azza wa Jal tells us the purpose of salah. If we find in the Qur'an uh, uh, guidance to uh, uh, clarify what the theme of a specific ibadah is, and the theme of this specific ibadah as being salat is the remembrance of Allah. We know that Allah tells us in the Qur'an, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Indeed, prayer does deter you away from the uh, wrongdoings and matters that are faulty. But what is the greater purpose of salat? And indeed, the purpose of salah is to remember Allah. The purpose of salah is, is to bring the heart into a state of stillness, comfort, with the attachment to Allah Azza wa Jal directly. A question, Dr. Umar. You know, we, we remembered a few things now today, alhamdulillah, but I, I think the main uh, concern of these uh, one little settings thing. is just to one make thing. Just, it just cap this off. And not yeah, just to ahead. cap this off. Um, Regarding dhikrullah, a lot of parents out there, are, in reality, are struggling to get their young children to do dhikr on a regular basis. It's, do this, are you doing a dhikr? Are you doing this after every prayer? Are you doing it right? Are you saying bismillah all the time? And they feel disheartened because they're always pushing and struggling and striving. What do you say about that? I mean, what advice and nasiha can you give to motivate them? To motivate them to. You're older than me, Akhi. Your kids are older, so I don't know you. I have a comment about uh, remembering Allah. I think it will make it easier for us if we remember uh, three things or three levels. The first one is really where is that remembrance taking place and how is the remembrance supposed to be done and when is the remembrance to be done. The first one, the hadith actually says, whoever remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering such as this, Allah will remember him in a better place. Yes. So the location here is very important. We're not talking about remembrance on earth. We're talking about remembrance above the seven heavens and in a better companionship, the companionship of the angels. So we need to keep that in perspective all the time. How is that remembrance supposed to take place? The Sheikh has also given us indicatives of that. Many people that just do zikr Allah or remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using their tongue. This is not enough, clearly. You need to do it in a holistic manner, a comprehensive manner, with your tongue, your heart, and also your mind. We do put the mind last, 
because in the West, what they do, they think the mind is supreme. We don't think that in Al-Islam. Al-Islam, the heart is the supreme. Knowledge and consciousness comes from the heart, not from the mind. This does not mean reason, or logic, or rationality is not important <coughs> Islam. It is important. One of the arguments that Al-Quran Al-Karim uses is logic. So all three are very important. Last thing about how is collective zikr. We know there are some sects, they gather together and they keep saying Allah, 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 all night and all day long. This is an innovation. The best way to remember Allah is by yourself, not in a collective manner in a masjid or a, a private location. The last point is when. We do know that when we're eating, we're supposed to remember Allah by studying by saying Bismillah. If we say Bismillah for every morsel that we take, believe me, that will not be enough. If we say, remember Allah in the middle of our food, that's also good. We're also supposed to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of our food by saying alhamdulillah. So the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be done constantly and at all times. There's not like a particular day or a particular time where you need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. We, we need to do it just like breathing. As many breaths that we take, we need to remember Allah. We need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we need to do this? The benefits of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are so numerous that we cannot even count them. They are part of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody in this audience has mentioned that it will prevent us from committing a bad deed. Yes, this is true. But it will also elevate us. The more we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the higher up we go. It will earn us the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will earn us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the categories of people whom he loves are the people who do zikrullah, the people who are appreciated. So let's all do zikrullah as much as we can. For every breath that we take, we need to remember Allah, because without Allah, we would not be able to breathe. Allah, and and Allah khair. I, I, I really enjoyed what the brother was saying. May Allah, may Allah reward him. Thank but you. just a small uh, akhi, uh, correction, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the best way to remember Allah is uh, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, mentioning the name of Allah when we eat in the beginning, this is, this is the sunnah. However, to repeat it during one's uh, meal, the same meal, I think this would be something that would be additional to the sunnah. And uh, to, uh, I think, uh, remain strict to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in what's known as uh, dhikr al-muqayyid, set uh, uh, remembrances, uh, where there is dhikr al-mutlaq, the unlimited or unset uh, forms of dhikr, remembrances. This is uh, an open area. But in eating, we know that the Prophet Muhammad tells us when you begin, you say Bismillah. But if you forget, you say Bismillahi awaluhu wa akhiru in the name of Allah. Or when you forget, you say in the name of Allah, the beginning and the end of the meal. And this really uh, kind of uh, shows us that it's said only once during the meal. Uh, but yes, definitely, Akhi, to remember Allah on a constant basis. Uh, cons consistently with, with the uh, movements of a believer on a daily basis. It begins with our waking up in the morning. It continues all the way to when we go to sleep. Uh, and uh, we find uh, that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam reminds us that the heart, as it is called uh, in Arabic, al-qalb. Why is it called al-qalb? Because it, it has the nature of changing. Al-qalb, uh, from the word... Uh, uh, meaning something that always turns, something that goes from one state to another. Fluctuating. It fluctuates from one state to another. It doesn't, doesn't stay firm on one state unless one is, is constantly uh, uh, reminding this heart. And the Prophet himself وسلم, tells us, <laughs> This is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. He says, a cover, a light cover comes over my heart. And uh, how does this cover... Or how is this cover uh, dismissed or erased? Uh, so I remember Allah and I seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is Ghan. Ghan is the lesser cover. This is the prophets don't face the concept of Ran. Ran is a heavier cover. 
and this is where a person either has committed some form of heedlessness to the extent of forgetting Allah, forgetting Salah, uh, committing some form of, of, of uh, disobedience to Allah. This is where the heart is covered with a thick cover. And this is where a person needs to really come back to Allah. And this is where again the lifting of this cover takes place. But it's not something to be dismissed because if you dismiss it and take it lightly, it would in the end, uh, the, the, the heart will, uh, will come to that state of being hardened. And, and when it's hardened, it's, it's a lesser, uh, uh, it's a lesser uh, receptor of the remembrance of Allah. And the more one forgets Allah, the more the heart is, is subhanAllah hardened. So yes, Jazakallah khairah. It's a Thanks. continuous concept of, of way of life for the believer. And the more one does it, the more, uh, the more Allah Azza wa guides them towards better, uh, better, <coughs> life, more, better remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Someone, uh, for example, the example of Brother Kaif, but maybe more so plain liquor. If you did it one off, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, is it? As long as it doesn't become a habit. Is that correct? If it doesn't one off, let's say, this time he was, he was hungry, very hungry, for example, and he said, uh, and he was saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, every Muslim. Not intending to. to uh, one time, one off, one off. Yes, yes. It's not so a habit. So so Some people think that if you don't do exactly what the Sunnah said, that's incorrect. It's a bit wider than that, isn't it? Yes, I agree, Akhi, and this is uh, clear that uh, if, if, as the case, for example, when we meet one another and we say, May Allah accept uh, your deeds and my deeds. May Allah accept our deeds. If it's said once, twice, thrice, not intending it to be uh, an act of worship uh, which is repetitive, as is the case with the acts of worship, salah repeated five times a day, the dhikr of uh, set dhikr after salah, the set dhikr before eating, the saying of alhamdulillah after eating. If it's not done repetitive to that extent, then there's, there's no problem. One time one forgets and they repeat it once or twice. Alhamdulillah, there's no problem. On the contrary, inshallah, they're rewarded for it because the habit of the one who is in the state of remembering Allah is they will continuously uh, remember the name of Allah uh, consciously and unconsciously. It'll become a habit. And this is when the habit turns into a ibadah. This is when the uh, ulama say, al-ibadah is different from adah, meaning the act of worship is different from the act of habit. But when one is so concerned with ibadah, worshiping Allah, then their adah becomes ibadah. Their habits become an act of worship. And their entire life becomes an act of worship for the sake of Allah. Okay, let's, if uh, I may just uh, bring this uh, issue. You know, some Muslims, uh, look at these days as just like enjoy yourself, have fun. You know, the, the ayat, the hadith, the verses, the Quran, of the Quran, and the, the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, indicating or stressing the, the point that we, we have to remember Allah within these great days. Allah, or Allah, to remember the name of Allah on certain or appointed days. On the other hand, now we have some Muslims that they turn these days just to eat, drink, and have fun. And sometimes it goes beyond the Sharia limits. They say, let's just enjoy ourselves. Some might listen to music or do something not permissible. So I mean, I would like just to draw, you know, the, the attention of uh, all of us are here and our dear viewers. Yeah, there are, there, there are some boundaries, some yes. limits that we have, we have to be mindful of. Allah told us to remember Him, to, uh, Allah, <coughs> and to, it's okay to celebrate the Eid and this great uh, you know, occasion, but within the Sharia boundaries and limits. Any comment, Sheikh Allah? Well, uh, if you permit me, I'd like to hear from the brothers. Okay. And you, we, we really Please. are... Yeah. Brother Abdullah. There's a... Yeah. 
ما شاء الله عبد الله عندك دكتور عبد الله بوتنشلي ان شاء الله دكتور عبد الله از ا ستودنت ما شاء الله از اكشلي ماي شيك ترى ما شاء الله از ا شريعه ما شاء الله از طالب علم سيريوس طالب علم ان شاء الله Buying presents, uh, forms of worship. A lot of people don't know this and don't attend that. So, by intention, you get rewarded for every act you do. Being happy, making your kids happy. Do you can make some uh, comment on that. Well, uh, definitely, Akhi. And this, this reminds us of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he saw some of the uh, Abyssinians were, were playing the, the, their, their uh, kind of a dance in, in the masjid or in the, the area of the masjid. With the spears. Right, with spears, and not the dancing that we know. That <laughs> one, of <the> brothers, <laughs> one of the brothers last night was saying, "Put some disco lights." And <laughs> 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 this is not the. the, the, the yeah. Is it yeah. yeah. coming yeah. back? Yeah. 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 He, he, he wasn't serious. Of no, course. He was joking, yeah. Yeah. but the meaning is clear. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, it was to a form of happiness. And the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> said, "Liyalam ahlul kitab anna fi dinina fushha." Let the people of the book know that there is. Uh, uh, an area of, of happiness Enjoyment. and joy in our deen. And of course, the happiness that, that the Prophet is, is, is referring to here is that it is a, an area of taking a break. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we're not happy the rest of the year. Exactly. Wallahi, when I'm prostrating to Allah, this is the most happiest moment of my life. But of course, this is something that only uh, is, is, is an experience that one experiences when they, when they uh, prostrate to Allah. And I think it's also a form of, of guidance from Allah Azza wa at the same time, uh, first and foremost. Uh, but yes, uh, one of the themes of Eid, Akhi, uh, as the Prophet clarifies, telling us that, uh, that the people of the book would know that we have a break and we have an area of, of, of joy in our, in our uh, deen. Uh, again, one of the clearest themes is that we should not uh, imitate the holidays of other faiths and other beliefs. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad was so keen to this that the Jews of Medina used to say, saying about the Prophet Muhammad, this man has come to uh, do everything opposite from what we do. This is how keen the Prophet was trying to uh, make sure, separate and detach us from any form of distortions that took place in the prior scriptures. Beautiful lesson. Beautiful unfortunately, lesson. unfortunately today, we have people who celebrate uh, Valentine, people who celebrate, uh, celebrate happy birthdays or birthdays, people, happy birthday, hence yes. the happiness is there. It's <laughs> not when Eid comes, unfortunately. And really uh, sad, I was sent a message, and, and this was by one of my closest relatives, and I'm hoping they're listening right now. This is Nasiha without knowing who the Nasiha is for. <laughs> They sent me a, a happy Eid, right? The same way you find it on, on the fireplace during Christmas. Oh. Right? Hanging, hanging on Mr. Hanging in that, in that way. Like it, it only needs a couple of socks on the right That's and the left. <laughs> right? And then it has uh, the colorful way that they put the, the happy, you know. Happy Christmas. And then right in the center, between the happy and Eid, is a small cross. Oh, Billahi. Uh, wallahi, I this is This is the ignorance, too. They, they took, I think they took the photo, and this is what Copies happy is. Copied yeah, and paid. Like copy. This happens, this happens too, Dr. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <sighs> this happens too a lot because of the, the imitation, a lot of them are raised in the Western culture. Not the people here so much, but in the West. And they see that, well, that's a celebration, celebration, we can just adapt and make it fit. There was even one occasion, I remember in our country, when Eid, I think it was Eid al-Adha, uh, coincided with uh, Christmas on the calendar, because our calendar rotates. Our calendar is a lunar calendar, and there's a solar calendar, and they coincided. And there was a big discussion amongst Islamic centers and other people, not all of them, just a few of them, to unify the celebration as one celebration. I thought that is the pinnacle of misguidance. You know, so they wanted to unify and have one celebration for, for both faiths. It's an extreme form of interfaith. Wow. Incre incredible. Movement, incredible. So. And, and a lot of them had no issues with it. It shows you how deep the ignorance is, even amongst some of the, the leaders of the community. So it's really important for us to really recognize that. And if you do see that, what, what, what should people do? They see people doing these things. You know, bringing these type of practices into the religion. What should an ordinary person do in that society, in that family? What should they do? 
Wallahi, the, the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is clear on this concept. The uh, Sha'air of Hajj, the uh, manifestation of Hajj in Islam has many, many aspects. The happiness, the, the takbir, the dhikr of Allah. And one of the clear themes of Eid in Islam is it's always uh, related and attached to the, uh, to the hereafter, al akhirah We have Eid al-Fitr after fasting one month for the sake of Allah. It's related to a concept of ibadah always, a concept of worshiping Allah. So our holidays are always really in relevance to the uh, worship of Allah. The great worships. The great worships of Allah and always reminding us, even when you're in a state of happiness, as the ulama call Yawm al-Eid in uh, Eid al-Fitr, Yawm al-Jawais, the day of presents. And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to get a present. This is what the people of, of this dunya do. They give presents out. And it's no problem to give us present, you know, during the Eid. This is, this is, alhamdulillah, it's good and it's part of the happiness. But the reality of the ja'izah or the, the, the present is on the day of judgment when you're permitted to enter into Jannah. This is the greatest present. This is when ultimate rest, ultimate peace uh, uh, is, is given to the person in a bliss uh, that is endless. This is the real jayis. This is the real present. Uh, something that is uh, temporary, as this dunya is temporary, you take it for a little bit, use it, whatever it is, iPhone, whatever it is, in the end you, you have to accept the fact that you will consume it and it's gone. But in the, in the, in the Jannah, the greater present, as the ulama tell us, uh, <coughs> the, the endless giving and the endless elevation, uh, the days in, yo, in, 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 in Jannah, are related to one day that is known as Yawm al mazid the day of extras, the day of more. Of increase. And its uh, uh, relevance is to uh, uh, meeting with Allah Azza wa Jal instead of Yawm al jumuah in this dunya, and then we're given more and more and more. And the, the concept of more here really comes to mind that is there really something that is endless to that extent? But this is where the mind can't fathom this concept. It's only in Jannah. So really the... the the, uh, the problem with, with uh, and taking this uh, lightly is uh, we tend to imitate uh, rather than taking the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad we open the door for imitating the, the people of the book and uh, then the distortions that they have will come into our deen unfortunately Definitely. Definitely. and alhamdulillah the preservation Definitely. of the deen is, is uh, preserved for the, the, the believers to the end of time but the uh, believers will fall into some mistakes if they don't hold firmly to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just an example on that, of that <coughs> deviance. Uh, I know of a person, um, he was practicing in his community and his greater community, Muslim by name, didn't really understand the religion much. It was towards the end of December and they went to visit him in their house and these people had erected a Christmas tree in their house as just a religious holiday with not understanding its connotations at all and he was in the position that he only knew about it and no one else around him knew that it was a bad thing to do he raised up the issue and everyone just dismissed the young boy he doesn't know what he's doing let's ignore him and just leave him what should he do in that sense i mean should he continue on try to advise them and try to show them it's a, it's a really difficult situation that some of the youth face. Well, let's, let's utilize the experiences of some of the brothers, Yen, who, who live in the West, who had this, maybe faced this problem. I want to come back to what uh, the doctor was saying earlier. Uh, Islam itself is a utilitarian religion. Yes, what do we mean by utilitarian religion? We mean a religion with a purpose. We do not do anything without a reason. We do not do things for their own sake. The reason why we do anything is because we want to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muaz ibn Jabal, said that, Wallahi, he expects to be rewarded even when he sleeps. Yes. Why is sleeping rewarded? So that he will get more energy, so that he can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. This is the concept, this is the mentality that we need to use in our everyday life. Everything that we need must have the purpose of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is capable of turning what is difficult in our life into ease. So if we go with this concept, we will realize that when things got very difficult for us, there are many, many reasons why. One of them is because of our own sins. The other one is because we're not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. 
when we reduce our sins and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, we will earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for us. Inshallah. Unfortunately, what we have nowadays is what we call the Muslim inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. We have been so mesmerized by the material advances and progress of the West that we have forgotten our own self, our own identity, and our own deen. We need to go back to that deen, because within that deen is the solution to all the problems that we are facing. I hate to use this analogy, but in fact, it is the truth. We have a tiger by the tail, and that tiger is as Islam. Not only it is powerful, but we need to realize all its potentials. And once we realize that and implement that in our own life, the life of our families, the life of our communities, that's how, inshallah, we will be empowered and we will also earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I like what you said uh, yes, about the being mesmerized. My brother has deep insights, mashallah. Being mesmerized by the material things. And I think um, this relates to, to our concept of these days being days of happiness. What is actually, what is happiness? I mean, we've, we've been taught by media, by watching movies, and seeing people in a happy state, that to be happy, you need to dress in a fancy way and look attractive to other people, number one. Regardless of whether you're following the rules of Allah or, or not, you need to have an attractive person of the opposite gender around you, liking you and smiling at you. You need to drink certain things to make you feel light-headed. Like happiness has all these connotations of doing frivolous things. When the real happiness is actually fulfilling your purpose, why do I exist? People that, don't, that are not connected to this real purpose, they're actually filling their lives with all these things, trying to make them happy. Buying things, drinking things, injecting themselves with things, engaging in all kinds of bad things to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. But the real happiness is when we actually connect with our true purpose and we are connected with Allah. Mm -hmm. And then you don't need special food. Special. You can eat something very simple. You can dress very simply. Only have your close relatives with you and not do anything outrageous and feel very content and happy. And I think that's one of the things that, that we need to understand about this day of, of, of celebration is that we could just sit with our families and reflect on what Allah blessed us with in these days, mm -hmm. the rewards, and what the promise is in Jannah, and feel very excited and happy about that. Instead of looking at these flashing lights, and actually this is what shaitan does. Shaitan throws all these attractive, colorful things at us. And we think that's the true happiness when it's actually just a mm -hmm. fake mirage of some sort. Mirage, subhanAllah. Perfect, perfect description. Good the Prophet calls, calls it sarab in a way, mirage. The Prophet kind of calls these matters as like a mirage. It's, yes. not, it's not real. It's not really there, yeah. but it looks like something attractive and it's going to benefit you. Yes. But when you get there, you find it's empty. <laughs> and you actually need to chase the next <laughs> mirage every time. The thirst is, is yes. greater, yes. I'm sorry said. I cut you off. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it back to you, Hisha. That and what your doctor referred to, Yashe, real happiness a Muslim gets when he is in the state of sujood. Yeah. Whenever he gets something which is pleasing to him, he goes to the sajda. The real happiness or sense of elation which he gets after that mm. is the real happiness. Mm. Falling into the things which Brother Nu referred to is a timely joy which vanishes once you leave that ambience or environment. But when you get up from sajda, that particular feeling remains with you till the very next sajda. So it's a continuation of the elation which you get after sajda. This thing, these things which Brother Nu referred to vanishes, vanish like that. And one thing which Doctor very rightly said so, he referred to the benevolence of Allah the most benevolent 
how he is most benevolent to all of us when we indulge in things which he prescribed for us. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. He puts up us in the air. This is my belief, and I've been through that particular period as well. He puts us in the trials to put us on the right path. Second thing, and this is my personal experience, I'm saying it with conviction. Whenever he puts us in the trials, take my words, alhamdulillah, I'm very convicted when I'm going to say this. He never leaves us alone as well. The possibility and impossibility, the terms are meant for us, not for Allah. Allah's discretion, Allah's power, Allah's power is limitless. Where our logic ends, His amazing ways of working stop. So, all these things summarized to one thing which has been mentioned many a times, again and again reiterated, Tawakkal Allah, Tawakkal Allah, Tawakkal Allah. In whatever scenario of your life you are in, or whatever situation you are in, you have to be put there on purpose. So believe Allah, and He will come up with ways which are beyond your comprehension. Tawakkal Allah, Zikrullah. When we are doing Zikrullah, we are confessing the presence of Allah all times. So doing that thing again and again, and we are human beings. We face different situations in life, setbacks, elations, good things. Whenever we have difficult scenario or setbacks, if Allah has bestowed upon you that particular blessings of being in the state of zikrullah all the time, mm -hmm. that setback say stage vanishes very quickly. And if you are in a state of enhancing your in uh, with the things which Brother Noor mentioned, then this setback phase continues, lingers on, mm -hmm. and remains with you for a longer time, mm -hmm. which is very, very dangerous for our state of Iman. If you, if you may allow me, I have just a quick thought about celebrations. You know, some might say, okay, are you against uh, others celebrating their own. I, I would like just to share this with you, God, brothers and sisters and those who watch us. That, you know, Islamically speaking, we have our own ayad, uh, we have our own uh, Islamic uh, beast or occasions. And Muslims in general, they have to follow Islam, and, which means submission. They submit their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have no problem, I mean, when we talk about uh, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, uh, Hindus, you name it, uh, uh, atheists, let them celebrate what they, what, what they like, it's up to them. Mm -hmm. They have the freedom, they have the choice to celebrate whatever they like. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to live in peace with all humans. But what we are talking about here is that we're talking, we, are addressing, we are addressing Muslims having the, this complex of inferiority, as Dr. Abdullah mentioned, and doing things which are not sometimes permissible in their, according to their own religion. So what I want to say is that others can celebrate whatever they like. We have no problem. We are not against them. We are, we are not anti uh, those people celebrating whatever they like. But now we are talking about, we are talking with our Muslim brothers and sisters watching us or might, you know, listening or watching this uh, program later on that we say, brothers and sisters, we Muslims have our own identity. We have our own principles and values. We are supposed to, to follow Allah and his guidance and to follow Muhammad sallallahu and his, you know, teachings. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبُبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah says in the Quran, if you love Allah truly, follow me, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thus, and then Allah will love you. 
So this is what I would like to stress. Those who celebrate Valentine's Day. You know, if you read the history of Valentine, it, it is like a pagan story. It's a kind of a pagan story. In addition to that, even Christmas, if you read more about Christmas, there are some Christian sects who refuse celebrating Christmas. Yeah, that, you know that. In the United States, and as well as other countries, they are against this kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> celebration of Christmas. And even when we read the Bible, we, we, we verify, we double check, we examine the information, we will come to know that 25th of December was not the, you know, the, 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 the birthday of, of Jesus. This is like winter. And, you know, there are more, more details. I don't want really to go into that topic. What I want just to conclude with or stress that we are talking now with our Muslim brothers and sisters who are following others blindly. We are supposed to follow what Allah told us. We are supposed to follow what pleases Allah. ما يرضي الله. Not to follow just, I mean, others running after Miraj. This is the point I'd like to stress. Go ahead, Ahmed. Okay. Three points actually. First point was uh, what you said, Doctor, was very correct. Problem is Muslims do not understand that acts of celebration, Eid, are acts of worship for us as Muslims, and also in most cases for the non-Muslims. It's like you are praying in their church if you celebrate the Christmas. It's the same thing. It's no difference. It's an act of worship. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala informed us that we only have two Eids, so we are not allowed to celebrate other people's Eid. If a non-Muslim comes and says, I celebrated your age with you, why can't you celebrate Christmas with me? Mm. You can say to him, just like my religion forbid, forbid me from having, uh, from eating pig, for example pork, mm -hmm. it forbid me from celebrating Christmas. And if they were taught that, they would understand that and they yes. wouldn't ask you to come anymore to Christmas. Okay. As for their religion, it doesn't forbid them from celebrating Eid. Uh, second of all, Brother, uh, brother uh, Noor, Allah Jakhir mentioned, it's very correct that we, uh, the ultimate joy is in uh, ibadah, worship, but also wearing good clothes, doing th things that make you happy within the boundaries of Islam mm. is a form of worship in Eid. And yes. the Prophet ﷺ did that. Yes. He wore the best clothes for Eid. Yes. And uh, some people might say, Islam only has two Eids, two uh, celebrations. Mm -hmm. Christianity has lots of different celebrations. It's, uh, Christmas, Easter, start of New Year, birthday, Valentine, all different um, mm. celebrations. In Islam, we have more than them. Every week we have Eid, which is the day of Jummah, Friday. Mm -hmm. Most people do not actually notice that this is a Eid. They have Eid, yes. This is the weekly Eid. Yes, weekly Eid. Mm. And, and it's interesting you bring this, Afi, to perspective that the uh, refuting of, of uh, let's not use the word refuting, but to clarify that yeah, and by uh, our teachings in Islam, we're not allowed to participate in any other holiday because our holidays or our celebrations of Eid are related to acts of worship. If you look at New Year's, for, for example, it's about dunya. Celebrating the New Year and uh, I wish you a happy New Year and, and all the, the good stuff that come with that. Uh, and this is, as the doctor said, it's, they, this, it's, we, have, we tolerate this. Actually, Maybe the word tolerate uh, kind of gives us authority over them. No, on the contrary. The uh, Quran, the, the deen of Islam, is the only book, the only faith that recognizes the other faiths and other beliefs by even name and title. <coughs> no other book will you find recognizes other beliefs, other faiths, other than the Quran. The Quran claims uh, or states that there are people of the book. Their name is Christian, their title is Jew. Uh, uh, their uh, belief is paganism, uh, they are people who are atheists. They are people who believe that only time kills us. Uh, uh, they are called in the Quran al dahriyun So the recognition of, of the existence of these other faiths is there in the Quran, in the source of Islam. However, me as a Muslim, I do not participate because I don't believe in such concepts, but at the same time, I don't say that you don't have the right to celebrate. On the contrary, 
if one was in the Muslim community, if a Christian was living amongst Muslims, as was the case in the time of the Islamic states, uh, they would be given the full right to celebrate their holidays and they wouldn't be deterred of these rights in any way. And this would be, this would be something that uh, Islam provides as a right for them, not the individual ruler or something of this sort, but rather Islam has provided that concept of, of tolerance and coexistence among uh, these different faiths and beliefs. And uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an essence, we find that the Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, teaches us uh, that these concepts that are celebrated only once a day by some of the uh, persuasions and beliefs in the world today, like Mother's Day, like Father's Day, uh, it's only one day during the entire year that these, uh, these uh, 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 celebrations take place. The entire year the father is forgotten. The entire year the mother is forgotten. But one day I send uh, a no. card of, of celebrating Mother's Day and that's it. I've given my mother's rights completely in this sense. So we find that Islam emphasizes these rights on a continuous, endless basis. And rights that are given uh, by a decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not a celebration. It's not an Eid. It's not just a holiday. But it's, it's a right given by Allah Azza wa Jal. If neglected, if, if it's dismissed, if there is any form of negligence towards these rights, then the individual is eligible for a grave punishment by Allah Azza wa Jal. This is, this is really the balance where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us <coughs> Eid has its, uh, has its uh, uh, specific uh, identity in that sense and uh, it brings the Muslim into perspective of the purpose of life and really as, 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 uh, as there is attachment with maybe let's say Mother's Day, Father's Day, so on and so forth in this regards, uh, the Eid only emphasizes this concept. In Eid, one of the themes of Eid is to always have good relations with one's kinship, Salatul uh, Rahm. If you've been neglective in, in the past with one's relatives, one's kinship, one's parents, then this is the time to bring ties together. And uh, it doesn't mean that it's limited to this day, but it's an opportunity to, to bring this uh, uh, forward. So Alhamdulillah, Eid in Islam is... It's, it's preserved in, in the way of worship, but at the same time it also manifests the joy, the happiness, that we Muslims are to uh, to practice, inshallah, by the will of Allah. Shaykh, a question that many viewers are asking. A lot of people in the West tend to give presents on Christmas or on Easter. All great. Happy Christmas, happy Easter. What's the ruling on this? Is it allowed or not? Islamic. Dr. Naji. Sorry. It we'll wake you up a little bit. <sighs> this is yours. <laughs> Sorry. So He's asking uh, some people would like to give presents as they do sometimes in Christmas and other uh, well, greetings, holidays, happy, happy or Christmas. happy greetings and happy Easter. Uh, this is a fuqh, a fuqh uh, question that I think scholars should answer actually. I would not say that I know the answer because this is like a verdict that you give. We have to be sure. Uh, so I, I think a, a scholar, a sheikh, a sharia should answer. I wouldn't really this answer. Is a, we just uh, mentioned that present giving isn't a problem but don't give presents as in imitating the, the people of the book. If, if, because the Prophet Muhammad generally tells us tahada or tahabbo. The Prophet guides us. Yes. Yes. yes, you can win their hearts. Right. Is, is giving right. a presents, but to link it right. to a certain you know, event. Um, but, uh, this is a cool actually, uh, Maybe the use of the cards is a problem. Uh, just giving presents. Mm -hmm. Some of the fuqaha. Sorry, brother. Like this one, if we are like Sheikh, we can celebrate this birthday, 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 but give and everything, but not mention who the specific uh, uh, I'd like the birthday or like this one. So, so it needs to be clear that we, this we have to celebrate like our, some birthday of our beloved or something. We are give them the present and we ask them this was present for not for your birthday, but it was for sake of the such as happiness. This is not a way then we can convey this our beloved or someone else. I think that's that's a different subject. Yeah. Some of the mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, some of the one of the Hanafi, if I'm not mistaken, Fuqaha mentioned that giving a present on the day of uh, salvation for Muslims, like Eid, like uh, Christmas, is an act of kufr. So whoever gave that an egg on the day of salvation, on, on the day of Christmas or the day of Eid, uh, celebration, uh, no Islamic celebration. 
It's an act of kufr mentioned. It's very that's, that's when, when it's Christmas, <laughs> someone comes to a when Christian uh, and gives a present. For Christmas, for example. Right. This, this is this is agreed upon. But we're talking about this Eid, our Eid. No, no, I'm talking about non-Muslim Eid. Right, right. Because in the West, you know, people. The questionnaire is about yeah, non-Muslim. Non-Muslim, yes. Because I, I oh, la 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 la. Yeah, yeah. Fiqh questions for uh, Sheikh Salah. Please. That, that let's, let's, yes. let's focus on I'm, our I'm, now. I'm talking. I'm, yeah. well, I'm sure about what I've read. No, no, no. That's okay. I, I misunderstood. Yeah. Well, I, I thought the question was, if the Muslim in, during Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, mm-hmm. uh, in our Muslim uh, uh, ayad or celebrations, if one gives another Muslim a present, this no. is this is what I understood. No, I meant the, the Muslim gives a non-Muslim a present on no, their no, day. No, no. Then I misunderstood the question. I apologize. No, in in, in their celebration. If you recognize their celebration in any way, this is an act of kufr. Yeah, an act yes. of. Uh, well, happy. I wouldn't say kufr. I would be like, no. And this if is an know, act. If they, know, if they know what it is. If, if you're ignorant of, of the, of the yeah, act, yeah. then you've fallen into a mistake. Yes. But it's not an act of kufr, kufr inshallah, unless you believe in what they're celebrating. If you believe that uh, yeah, I, the, 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 the way they believe is I, Son I, of I God and so on and so forth. Some this, of the people have mentioned that. So I suggest I'm avoiding I'm, talking about But it's far about from... from let's ask let's ask I'm avoiding Kufur or this. I mean, let's... I'm not saying Kufur. A specialist saying. person answers, please. Okay, okay, agree. I mean, no, I was, I was agreeing with you. Let's... Because uh, we have a... I think we have a fatwa session. Yes. With uh, Sheikh uh, yeah, I mean, Salah. Just opinions are opinions. I'm not making fatwa. I'm just mentioning what some of the fuqaha mentioned. I'm okay, saying that it's a grave okay, brother, but issue. But I mean, I would let's focus, okay. please, on the session uh, for this discussion. Okay, brother. I have a comment. Yes, please. I, I would like to come back to what the Sheikh was saying about the tolerance of Islam. Mm-hmm. This is a very, very good point that uh, many times people tend to forget about it. Islam is the most tolerant religion on the face of the earth. And we, as Muslims, we need to emphasize this a lot so that people will realize it as well. If we go back in history, when the Jews were persecuted in Spain, asking them to convert to Christianity or be killed Mm -hmm. or to leave, they preferred to pick up their bags and go to Muslim countries Mm -hmm. like Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria. Some went as far as Turkey. Why? Because they know under Islam, They can live peacefully, they can practice their religion, and they can get their full right. This is what Islam gives you, justice and tolerance, not only for Muslims, but also for non-Muslim alike. We do know even in Medina, there was interfaith, Christians, Jews, and Muslims Mm -hmm. uh, together. So when we go back to the earlier issue that we were talking about, which is the inferiority complex of the Muslims. Why is this taking place? It's taking place basically for two reasons. The first reason is because Muslims themselves do not fully realize who we are. The second reason is we do not realize what we have in our deen. And this is what led to this current situation whereby we have in our hand something that is worth more than one thousand dollars and we're exchanging it for 50 cents why how come doesn't make any sense this is why the situation led to people who have a beautiful name like Mohammed changing it to Mo this is why in terms of garments people throwing out the Islamic attire and even getting to attires that are not allowed such as tight jeans and things like that. A t-shirt that shows uh, things that are not supposed to show. Mm -hmm. So we're leaving something that is very important, something that is very, very valuable. Not only for the Ahira, but even in the dunya, for something that is basically worthless. So once we realize who we are as human beings and as Muslims, once we realize what we have, Al-Islam, it is only when we match those two that uh, we can empower ourselves, our families, and our communities, as I've said earlier. And that's when we actually become very happy with what we have to the point that we celebrate it mm-hmm. and we, we, we feel satisfied. Like on the day of Eid, after what we've witnessed of Ramadan, for example, or mm-hmm. of Hajj, and all the blessings and reminders mm-hmm. of what Allah has given us in Islam, then we become very happy and we put on our special clothing 
and we spend time with those close to us and we feel the sense of you know having treasure mm -hmm. with us so we eat and we celebrate and we we laugh with each other but we continuously connect us to to why we're doing this mm -hmm. you know what is the significance of the aid most definitely uh, so, two things happiness and success in life and in the hereafter are not only impossible but unthinkable without Islam and the deen. What are you going to think about except this mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you? Impossible. A couple things uh, about the, uh, the dawah, or not dawah, but the, uh, the mixing of celebrations uh, between two religions. Uh, I, I think it just boils down to a very simple ayah that we all know, lakum dinukum wa liyadin. For me, it's my religion. And for you is yours. That's basically it. You know, if they want to do that or whatever it is that they do, that's fine. And we're going to do what it is that we do. Uh, but I said I confused the word with that earlier because that's actually what causes a lot of the problem. People think, okay, let's do this as like a Dawa thing, you know, let's bring them closer or let's go there and try to make it seem like, you know, we're okay, it's cool, let's just connect and talk about Islam and things like this. I've seen that, and it's a slippery slope when people uh, want to do things like that, especially commoners, the common, you know, people, the uh, men, women, and children who are just mixing um, with other groups and other faiths. And to highlight uh, what Dr. Abdullah was saying about an inferiority complex, it kind of all goes together. You mix the inferiority complex with, the, okay, let's give dawah, plus I'm a, you know, commoner who doesn't even know my own religion enough, uh, let alone uh, trying to talk to someone else about theirs. It just becomes a recipe for disaster uh, in those Western communities uh, in particular. Uh, the intent is good, you know, to want to call people uh, to Islam, uh, but it's just, uh, you know, when it comes to, to those issues, uh, there's a lot of confusion. You know, and and one should check if that's your interest. You want to give dawah, you want to uh, call people to Islam. That's a good thing, uh, but check, ask uh, qualified people um, before putting yourself in a situation that could be potentially dangerous for you. And I always tell people, uh, you know, dawah on, on that level when you're you know calling hundreds of people uh, to a celebration, or you yourself are going to a celebration that consists of hundreds of people. This should be left for qualified uh, individuals, not somebody who just, I have a good good intention mm -hmm. uh, and I want to do something right, uh, but for people who are knowledgeable and people who are qualified to handle things um, on that level. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of, a lot of uh, mistakes come with the original intent of dawah. You know, I'm going to do this for dawah. I'm going to do that for dawah. Uh, so when it comes to that, uh, I would just say really be careful with that and, and, and prioritize yourself and your family uh, first by learning your own religion uh, enough to take care of yourself and make sure you can, you yourself know about your religion and also uh, giving priority to your family. And once your situation uh, is squared away by the grace of Allah, then you can put yourself uh, in those situations uh, having knowledge of your own religion. I, I, sorry. Yes, please. I just have one question. Uh, for those that are living in, in uh, non-Muslim countries, in Europe and other countries, children, we just must not forget about children uh, in celebrations, because those are the ones really looking forward to celebrations. More attached to it. Yes, correct. Now, they go through uh, this uh, different non-Muslim celebrations of Christmas and all the ones that you mentioned before, New Year and Valentine's Day, all these things. And they feel like more attracted to those celebrations. Yes. You know, rather than actually having our Muslim celebration of two Eids. What we should do, like what should be done to actually bring them more attracted to Eid celebrations rather than actually, because we are talking about, I mean, being in physically involved in the situation, like the surroundings and the environment, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really has an effect, especially on the children. So what should be really done 
to, to actually attract them more towards Eid rather than actually being gone more attracted towards Christmas and other celebrations? Well, I think, uh, and I'll just say briefly, I cannot give it to Dr. Naj, inshallah. I'm sure he's more uh, able to answer it. But uh, in, in regards to this, I think the media has played a very uh, uh, clear role in emphasizing and persuading to the ways of celebrating the, the uh, whether it's New Year's or Christ, uh, Christmas or some of the other uh, celebrations, uh, people have uh, drawn from these, uh, from these media sources and outlets that this is the main trend. This is what really is, is going on in the world. And unfortunately, the young are affected. They're influenced by this. Uh, and on the other hand, our celebration of Eid isn't as attractive as, as others celebrate their... So this is where the Prophet Muhammad emphasizes, and he gave the, uh, the, the permission to have uh, a break during this Eid and, and really uh, open the, 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 the uh, opportunity for the, the Muslims to celebrate in, in a way that is uh, attractive and persuasive. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we kind of uh, celebrate Eid in a dry way, uh, and, and this is sad, and maybe uh, this is a good uh, observation, Akhi. Maybe hopefully we can try to begin by uh, uh, reviving this sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and really giving, uh, uh, a, 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 let's say, some kind of uh, stasm, if I can use that word, ta'id, or maybe a different uh, type of sting so that people will, 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 will more uh, look at Eid in, in a more uh, uh, attractive and persuasive way. Well, what do you say, Dr. Naji? It seems to me that families, uh, as well as Islamic societies and centers in the West or in, you know, just uh, abroad, they should try their best to bridge this gap, uh, trying to make more professional work, uh, more preparation, uh, distributing or giving presents. They can take them to, like, some I, I, I have I have seen this in some countries in the West that some Islamic centers, mashallah, they arrange three day program camping, going they take the families and go camping. This is another great thing. They have uh, events uh, so, I mean like they celebrate together, let's say forty families, fifty families they go uh, to one big place like you know cottages, and then they celebrate uh, the families and the children. They bring presents, uh, programs, mashallah, contests, uh, contests, many, 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 many beautiful things. So they take them a little bit uh, in a professional and a very effective way. So uh, this is what I suggest that families, Islamic societies, and Islamic centers in the West, generally speaking, should arrange, should plan uh, effectively for the, uh, our ayad, uh, our Eids. We have two major Eids. So let's make the difference. Let's make, as Dr. Omar said, let's make them more uh, interesting and more uh, attractive. And our media should do, do, do some of the, the, this is another, the things that really bring Another people. important dimension. And, and, and hands up to Huda. Huda is, is doing at least something. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, uh, are, uh, this is the generic case which Brother Zirak referred to. But there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. Exceptional families who are residing in non-Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. Their offsprings are when they grow up are more Islamic than those who are residing in the Islamic countries. <coughs> I have seen these cases in the West. Why? The prime example to be followed by any kid, all the children, are their parents. Exactly. Mere rhetoric would never do anything to them. Parents got to be, got to be doing actions speak louder than words. If they see their parents saying something different, salah, compulsory, do it five times a day. But when it comes to salah time, 
parents are sleeping, indulging into activities. So they see the contradiction. Yaqi, my father, five times a day compulsion, salah. When it comes to salah time, he's doing all sorts of things, business works and things like that. Parents should lead by actions, not by rhetorics, not by words. Examples. So this does wonder. Yeah. And consistency is a key to success as well in this regard. Mm -hmm. People who are residing in Western countries, non-Muslim countries, they have quite troubled challenges. But in my opinion, house, home, environment is the prime and should be the prime example for the kids to follow. Don't expect things that schools would do certain things for you, for your kids. In my opinion, 90% of the personality grooming is done by the parents. Schools only might be, when it comes to presentation, school might be f giving the finishing touches. So if those who are residing in the West make their actions very prominent rather than rhetorics. And my kids, mashallah, never like to listen to me. If I happen to, be, if I become a friend with them, then they are very listening. If I sound like a teacher, then they would like to shun me off. This is the reality. It is, yes. We cannot, we cannot live by the rules all the time. Gone are the days when people were bullied around to get things done, or kids were bullied around. Now, scenario is totally different. The children would only be listening to you if you talk to them in their language you befriend them, and, you and take account of their interest. Hmm. If I ask my kids, okay, guys, sit, I'm going to give you something to talk about Islam. Okay, man. Okay, okay Baba, continue. But if they are playing, if they are doing their own chores, if I be part of their activities and then start talking about Islam, then they have been more attentive to listen to me. So, situation, look around the situation, investigate, get into the situation, and from that situation derive something which will convey the message of Allah and His Prophet in a more acceptable way. Mm -hmm. Don't force it. Don't force it. Situation or what? In, I don't have a word for that. Customization of the situation to tune the te to the teachings of Islam is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So be part of the activity and drive your kids to, towards Islam. Wonderful. Wonderful. This, 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 uh, As children, uh, so <coughs> the situation can vary across the scope, uh, the Western scope in particular, and uh, people need to assess their situation and, and determine if this environment is conducive to the growth and the, and the uh, prosperity of their religion for themselves and for their children. If you see you're losing your children, if you see you're losing yourself, why keep living uh, in an environment like that? You know, you have to fix your situation. You know, uh, well, however long it takes, it's not going to be an overnight issue. If, if you are living in an environment where you have to fear for your safety, you have to fear for your religion, you have to fear for the religion and safety of your children, then you need to get out of that environment. You know, it doesn't mean you necessarily need to come to a place like this. Uh, if you can, alhamdulillah, uh, we would all love to live in Mecca or Medina. But if you can't, there are environments that could be better it, within your own country, sometimes even within your own city. Uh, just moving to another place or another space that can be better, where you're not, uh, you don't witness with your own eyes the loss of yourself and the loss of your children, and you do nothing about it. Yeah. So I want to give my when own experience in this. Yeah. I'll come back to you. Okay, well, I'll come back to you. Okay. Well, well, I want to give my own experience in this because it applies exactly to me. I live in the West. And I try to raise a child to become a good Muslim in the West. Believe me, this is not a joke. It is extremely hard. 
because of what Sheikh Omar has said, the media is a big, big negative factor. The public schools are a big, big negative factor because some of the values that are teach are non-Islamic values. And then you have the peer pressure also that is involved. But as far as my own case is concerned, everything started wrong from the very beginning. When it's come to getting married, I married because of love, and I did not take into consideration the deen. And that was a big mistake on my part. I should have listened to the hadith of Rasulullah sallam, that says if you ma want to marry a woman, <coughs> go for the one with the deen. Had I gone for the one with the deen, I would not have made the mistakes that I have made in the past. So what is the solution? The solution is not for the father alone. I, before the marriage, thought I can handle it. I married a Christian woman. And I said, oh, we Muslims are allowed to marry Christian women. This is not a problem. I can handle it. No, I was not able to handle it. So it's a holistic problem. The father has to be uh, involved. The family has to be involved. The masjid has to be involved. The community has to be involved. Unless all of these four factors work in conjunction, it will never happen. How, what is the solution? The solution is to have a balance. The solution is to offer alternatives. The solution is to have selection. We have to be the one who will choose what we want <coughs> and reject what we do not want. It is not fair for our children to tell them, okay, you're gonna grow up in the West, but we don't want you to take none of their values. This is not possible. It's like dipping your hand in the ocean and take it out and asking your hand not to be wet. It's not possible. This is against the universal laws of nature. So some absorption of the local culture is okay, as long as that local culture does not contradict Islam, as long as it's not against our values and our deen. If we are the masters of choosing what is good for us and what is not good for us, then things will be fine. Uh, no one, no matter how macho man he is, can afford to be aloof from the environment he lives in. Oh yeah. No one can do that. But when it comes to kids, I think my, my personal experience, our kids interact lesser with the society we are living in and more with the media. So media plays a very pivotal role in developing their minds towards religion or towards the things which are prohibited, isn't it? So do control the access to that particular thing. It is a big challenge as well. You cannot. You go to any site, then things also are suggestive things. Portals are also there. Go th which are prohibited. How far can you go in controlling all these things? Challenges are magnified with the presence of media. How do we, because my kids, alhamdulillah, are more inclined towards media rather than towards society. Media controlling is pivotal. And it mm, would, da, would do wonder, inshallah. And Mr. If, Zahi, go ahead. And if, if, I'm done, but media controlling is pivot. Mm -hmm. I, I think this, this brings us to a clear appreciation of what Huda is doing. I'll be, I'll be yes. and the one, inshallah, to remind ourselves of this, this uh, effort that, and we're all involved in this. May Allah reward us all and not yeah, neglect us in, in, in uh, our sincerity. <laughs> Uh, so this is really something that we should recognize as being uh, an effort to uh, give a substitute or something that is maybe different from what the mass media of today is, is portraying, uh, an Islamic approach, uh, a sober approach, uh, an approach to really uh, uh, cultivate the, uh, the, the uh, society, uh, whether it's one's uh, kids, one's, uh, 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 you know, the, the entire family. If this is uh, uh, available, uh, you can really shut off the, the other channels and provide them with these productive channels. 
So I, I really do appreciate Huda's efforts. I ask Allah to further give them the, the ability to convey the message, provide the Muslims and the non-Muslims who are looking uh, for a more productive. I know in the West today that there is much criticism against uh, the, the media, whether it's Hollywood or Bollywood or we in the Arab world have K Cairo wood, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, there is are that, many woods name, popping really? up from uh, all over the world, <laughs> unfortunately. And they all follow the message of shaitan in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> the same shaitan is following, is, 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 uh, his following is all over the world. But alhamdulillah, uh, we have these uh, outlets, these, these sober outlets, alhamdulillah, that have really provided the Muslims and those who are seeking uh, a betterment of, of life uh, and a, a source of guidance to morals, to clear... Uh, 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 conduct of character. Huda, there are other channels that are on, on the same path, uh, but the, the, uh, the rising of these channels takes time. And this is where I hope that even those who criticize Huda, this is a message for people out there, those who criticize Huda, those who criticize Al Majd in the Arabic language, those who criticize maybe even Peace TV or other channels. Uh, recognize that these channels are the only channels available now. Islam, uh, Islamic Channel in South Africa, I think there's a Channel Islam yes. or Islamic yeah, Channel. Few, there is in, in the UK, I think. Islamic but channel. don't be don't be an obstacle against these efforts. Try to support these efforts, Until whether financially yes. or even by by you know encouraging by by words, Take saying that these also. right give ideas. If you have criticism, productive criticism, send it. Tell us what what you think it would be better. Uh, but don't be a negative, uh, a negative uh, element towards these efforts of Islamic da'wah. This is unfortunate. We're talking now about the dangers of the media. This is media that's trying to provide for us and our families the concept of a proper uh, uh, outlet of media. Uh, let's, let's savor it. Let's try to provide the support that we can, inshallah. This message is from all of us uh, to all of us, inshallah. Before we conclude this, this part of the, of the session, Let's go back to the Hajj rituals. Yes. Now, let's go back to Mina and Hajj. Uh, Sheikh Omar, uh, today is the 11th, right? What are the works or rituals a Hajji or a pilgrim is supposed to do just to give our dear viewers an idea of well, Amal. I, I, see, Amal. I see you have your stones here, so I'm, I'm sure. Holy brother, I think brother brought, brought them. I brought those stones. I wanted to actually uh, <laughs> ask about the stones. Yes, we, we, have, we have seven. Let me, let's give a, I was told that my size, yeah. my size was slightly off. We have seven right here, right? Yes, seven. Sure, this, this is the one, one of the Jamarat. One of the Jamarat yes, throwing the stones. Allah. However, the, the, it's inshallah acceptable, but the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he took stones the size of pebbles. Mm -hmm. Pebbles, yes, small yes, pebbles. Yes. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, so don't exceed. Big, it's it's very, very big. Okay. It, actually, yes. this, is, this is the size of three pebbles. Oh. Really? Three pebbles. Yes. So, I think everyone's idea of what a pebble is might be different, Sheikh. And, and uh, <laughs> well, look, when we were at hmm. Mustalifa, so can right. you bring us some one brothers example? had some big... Do you have a good sample? <laughs> you, you know, Akhi, so, 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 some of the stories that we hear, I don't know if they're true. Or not. <laughs> just, just to you know, give a, a lighter, uh, you know, yes. uh, uh, atmosphere to what we're talking about. Some of the people who went to uh, Jamarat mm -hmm. and they had this this serious problem in the past. They say they, some of them, no, no, they, some of them went to the extent of taking their slippers off. Yes, and yes. Saying, <laughs> we've heard this. Thinking the shaitan is right there, okay. standing, just you know, that's ready true. to be. I heard one one person tried to jump in and try to right, uh, right. <laughs> 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 Doctor, can you explain a little bit about this? Like, for example, when we are actually throwing the stones at Jamarat, what feeling we should have? Yes. Like, while well, doing this practice. You know, yes. clarify it, please, for the audience. Yes, I'm Allah sure they would like to know this. Well, yes. uh, this, of course, manifests the, uh, the moment that Ibrahim was uh, obeying Allah. In one narration, that this was done by Ibrahim three times. And every time Ibrahim was obeying Allah's command in the true vision that he saw, that he would sacrifice Ismail, his firstborn son, and that through this sacrifice, he would be obeying Allah the ultimate obedience. And uh, this was manifested in Ibrahim being given a son at an older age, and uh, by being given this son, and this son uh, growing to the age of 13, 14, and uh, at that moment, Allah commands 
uh, Ibrahim uh, to sacrifice him, as Allah tells us in the Quran, I'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ He said, Allah tells us to, that Ibrahim said to his son when he reached the age that the son is more closer to the father, that, O oh my son, uh, I've been commanded to sacrifice you. And the sacrifice uh, here was submitted to not by only Ibrahim, but Allah tells us that the submission also was by Ismail. Allah tells us that, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَ وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِيلِ Indeed, when uh, Ibrahim and Ismail submitted, and he took his son, and he put the, the, the blade right there at his neck. Uh, put him in that state. Then Allah called upon Ibrahim and told him, uh, You have uh, confirmed the, uh, the vision of Ibrahim. But prior to that, uh, before them going to that state, Shaytan came to Ibrahim three times, three places trying to deter Ibrahim from obeying, obeying Allah. And this is really where the uh, symbolization of obeying Allah and, uh, and uh, shunning shaitan by saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Rajim. And we symbolize this, uh, we imitate Ibrahim by taking the, taking the stones and throwing them at these three uh, spots uh, as Ibrahim salam did. And in another narration, it was Ibrahim, the father, it was, uh, Isma it was then Hajar and then Ismail. So all three, the entire family actually, they uh, would shun the shaitan and the shaitan's whisperings and they would obey Allah's command, uh, commands and completely submit to the way of Allah. <laughs> and this is what we do. And it's a reminder. It should really uh, uh, internalize with us as a reminder to shun shaitan, the way of shaitan, and to really uh, stick to the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. As is, the, uh, as is the path of Ibrahim. And this is a path that uh, really brings one uh, closer to Allah. And it's a, it's a path that is uh, continuous until the time of death. As Allah says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship uh, your Lord until the time of certainty comes. And certainty, yaqeen, in this ayah means death. No two people, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, will argue over the concept of death. We will all die by the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Even the angel of death will die. Even the angel of death at a time will be brought as, as a lamb and will be slaughtered right at the, between Jannah and Nar. And that will be the announcement of the end of death. And all will live eternally, whether the life of eternally, eternity is in heaven or the life of eternity is in hellfire. Waliyadu billah. But the stoning uh, is to be done today, inshallah. Uh, the three spots. The first day, as we did last uh, yesterday, the last time, was only al jamra al-Kubra, the bigger Jamra. And the bigger Jamra here is done seven times, seven stones. And then we uh, return, inshallah, today. And we do the, the three. And we do each one of them seven, 21 total. And of course, further on uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we do the same. Uh, and then uh, if one does the tawaf and sa'i, and after that, concerning uh, what they did, they combined the, the tawaf, or the sa'i, uh, I'm sorry, the tawaf of the ifad and tawaf al wada together, and then they leave uh, Mecca, or that uh, another situation would be that they would do uh, later the entirety of the tawaf and sa'i together. Uh, May Allah accept the master of hajj and our good deeds. It's great to be, again, as we mentioned at the beginning of this session, Dhikrullah, remembering Allah, to be mindful, remembering Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamdulillah. Doctor, before we wrap it up, one thing only, I think this will be inshallah very beneficial to all of us and to all who are listening and watching. Inshallah. Whenever we leave any congregation, any assembly, there is kafara in majlis. This should be conveyed to everyone. So it does expiate whatever wrong we said. Yes. So I believe one of you must be... Why not you, Akhi? Yeah. It is. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk So it will, inshallah, take away whatever loose we talked about. Uh, Translate it, Akhi. Translation. Quick translation of the meaning. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Glory be to you, Allah. It's difficult for me. Glory be to you, O Allah. 
and all praises to you. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Again, the testimony of the oneness of Allah that I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except you, O oh Allah. Uh, uh, we ask your forgiveness and we repent to you, O oh Allah. Allah. And we should try to make it a habit. Whenever Definitely. we are leaving some session, uh, this is uh, what the is prescribed by yes. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you could for uh, yeah. reminding us about it. Jazakallah yeah. khair. You get dajjar, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. May Allah accept from us all, inshallah. Abdullah minna wa minkum. Jazakallah khair. So we go to prepare for Salat al Dhuhr. No, to... we did Salat al Dhuhr. Al Asr. Al Asr. No, I'll give you a better. I'll give you a better. Inshallah, Asr and Salat is the one that says. أرحنا بها يا بها رحنا العصر وجبنا قابل صلاة. but I have better. I have good news though. Now I have I have good news إن شاء الله for all the brothers here and I know you know it the brothers have prepared for us the lamb and the rice of the sacrificial animal that we've all participated in the sacrificing all of us have a share in it so inshallah we'll enjoy eating parts of it right now beautiful uh, lamb uh, cooked to the the tenderness and to the to the perfection and, and i'm describing it i haven't even tasted it <laughs> 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 yeah, anyway, With a little bit of rice i think this is what they're calling us to do right now it's time for lunch and we're uh, in an act of worship. This is a days of feasting, eating, and remembering Allah. <laughs> so pray to Allah and slaughter. This is part of ibadah, part of worship. Alhamdulillah. So I'll beat you, brothers, there, and I'll, I'll make sure to get everything ready. <laughs> Save some for us, Sheikh. That's the key right there. Standing or sitting? Only with the shakes. Only with the shakes. Only with the shakes. Only with the shakes. Discrimination at its best. He doesn't like us. This is an inspirational photo that I'll put. I want to get the the message in the background as well. Work some more, Doctor Abdullah. Okay. Smile, mashallah. Bismillah. Beautiful, mashallah. You got it? Yes, okay. I got three. Everybody cut. 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 Everybody Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Right, my Zaka pleasure. Zaka Zaka yeah, this is this here. If you guys want to see it. Right. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah. send us that picture. Yeah. 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 He was too happy to see it. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. So wonderful. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Good job. Okay. Can you send those pictures to us? Yes. This group is one of the, mashallah, better groups that we've met. May Allah reward all of us. So to remember this gathering, inshallah, the photos is... Amin Allah. Amin Allah. Yes, Sheikh, let me do this. Some chop. Okay. Oh, what is this, like a rat trap? No, no, it's just... It's just attached so that, you know, the presentation stays intact. Use that for catching mice. Why not? Definitely. And I have these... Uh, this one I is a bag. So actually, but so. <laughs> I have. You can have it. They stole someone's rocks, huh? <laughs> he asked. No, no, he asked me. So. <laughs> I have a bottle filled with. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I think what's wrong? Something that doesn't belong to you, your hajj is finished. They take things yeah. literally out of context. Huh?